If you pay attention here in church each week, you've pretty much heard the word resurrection many times. And I think pretty much every week, every Sunday, we mention the word resurrection, I would think. Do you know what that big word means? I imagine you do, but just in case you don't, here's what it means. Resurrection means to come back to life after being dead. The word comes from a Latin word, which means to rise again. Do you know of anyone in the Bible who was raised from the dead? Of course you do. Jesus, Jesus was raised from the dead. He was killed, he was put in a grave, and we know he came back to life. He was resurrected. This was a miracle by the power of God. We will get back to Jesus though in a few minutes. But first, I was curious to know if there were any other people in the Bible that had been resurrected. Any stories of other people who had been resurrected? So I looked and I found that yes, hundreds of years before Jesus was born, there were three people who miraculously came back to life. We learn about them in the Old Testament in the books of First and Second Kings. The first account is a boy that died and was brought back to life by the prophet Elijah. This is an interesting story and it's found in 1 Kings 17. Elijah was told by God to stay at a widow's house during a time when, there, when God had caused no rainfall in the land and there was a drought. And while he was there, the widow's son became sick and died. Some other interesting stuff happened too, so it'd be good for you to go read that story. But the boy became sick and he died. And the woman was very sad and upset and thought that God had made her son die because she was a sinner. But I don't think that's really the case. Elijah took the dead boy from her arms and he went upstairs and he, let's see, I lost my place, and he laid him on the bed. Now, this is really interesting. And let's turn to uh, verse 21 through 24. It says, and he stretched himself, this is Elijah, stretched himself over the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord, my God, please let this child's life return to him. And the Lord heard Elijah's prayer and the life of the child returned and he revived. Then Elijah brought him down from the upper room and gave him to his mother. Look, he said, your son is alive. Then the woman told Elijah, now I know for sure that you are a man of God and that the Lord truly speaks through you. Probably the news of this happening spread all through the land and people knew that Elijah was a prophet of God and had God's power. A similar incident occurred with the prophet Elisha who came after Elijah. There was a lady who lived in a place called Shunem and so she was called a Shunemite. Try to say that a few times. She saw that Elisha traveled near her town a lot and as he traveled around prophesying for God, she decided to build a special room in her house for him to stay in. And she fixed meals for him and helped him uh, have just a nice place to stay. One day while Elisha was away, the couple's son was out working with his father in the fields and he suddenly got a really bad headache and then he died. So the woman carried the body of her son into his room and into Elijah's room and she laid it on the bed. Then she quickly went to find the prophet Elisha. When she found him, she pleaded with him to please come to her house because her son had died. And Elisha first sent his servant ahead and he put the servant, or he put his staff on the boy thinking, I guess thinking that maybe that would heal the boy, but, but it didn't. So Elisha came and the mother came and they went to the upstairs room where the boy was laying on the bed. They shut the door and they prayed. So we could read this starting in 2 Kings 4, verse 34. It says, and he went up and he lay on the child and he put his mouth on his mouth and he put his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands and he stretched himself out on him and the flesh of the child became warm. Elisha then walked around the room and he stretched himself out again on the boy and the boy sneezed seven times and then he opened his eyes and he was alive. I'm not sure what all that sneezing was about, but that's what happened. The woman was grateful that her son was alive and that she knew now for sure that Elisha had the power of God. I don't think she doubted though. I think she knew he had the power of God. So this next incident I'm gonna tell you about 
is really strange. Elisha is connected with another resurrection that occurred after he was already dead. Let's read what happened here in 2 Kings 13, verse 20, 20 and 21. It says, then Elisha died and was buried. Groups of Moabite raiders, these are like robbers, used to invade the land each spring. Once when some Israelites were digging near the grave of Elisha to bury a man, they spied a band of these raiders. So they quickly threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and they fled, just threw him down. But as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet, came back to life. Wow, that shows the amazing power of God was strong in Elisha even after his death. So now let's go to the New Testament. We know, of course, that Jesus also used the power of God to raise several people from the dead. Jesus raised up the son of a widow when he was walking through the town of Nain and came upon a funeral procession. The woman was sad because her husband was already dead and now her only son had just died. And Jesus felt sorry for her. And we will see this starting in Luke 7, verse 13. 13 through 16. We'll go ahead and read that. It says, when the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and he touched it and the bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. And the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd and they praised God saying, a mighty prophet has risen among us and God has visited his people today. Jesus didn't touch the boy or lay his body on him and there was no sneezing. He just commanded him and he came back to life. Jesus later brought a 12 year old girl back to life. I think some of you out there who are listening are 12 years old. So think about this. A man named Jairus was very sad that his daughter was dying. He was a leader in the Jewish church and he begged Jesus to visit his house and heal his dying daughter. Jesus began to follow Jairus home, but there was a huge crowd of people wanting Jesus to heal them. And he kind of got lost up in the crowd. And soon an official from the church came and told them that, hey, Jairus' daughter just died. She's already dead. So there's no reason for Jesus to come to his home. But Jesus turned to Jairus with words of hope. Let's see what Jesus did, starting in Luke 8, 50 through 55. Verse 50 says, but when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith and she will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, James, who were apostles, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people who were weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they all knew that she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, my child, get up. And at the moment, her life returned. At that moment, her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Imagine when you're dead, you're hungry. There's another story of Jesus raising his friend Lazarus from the dead. It's very long, so there's not enough time to read it all right now. But for homework, and you know, sometimes I give you all homework, I'm asking that you all would go read John 11, the whole book. In the account of, it's, it's the account of Lazarus and in, in him being dead and Jesus bringing him back to life. In this story, you will find the shortest verse in the Bible. Some of you know what that is, don't you? What's the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. I think I heard that. Read John 11 and you'll see why Jesus wept. There are other counts of people coming back from the dead at the crucifixion of Jesus right as he died. And also Paul and Peter brought people back to life later on in the Bible. But all of these that I've told you about came back to their normal physical lives on earth. And later on, when they were old, they died again, just like normal people will die. 
and they went back to the sleep of death. Jesus, however, was the very first person and so far the only person to be raised to immortality. He died and was buried as a physical man, but he came back to life as a spiritual man with a body that will live forever. He appeared to many people after he came back to life. His body could disappear and reappear to his friends. We know that he visited and taught his friends for at least 40 days after his resurrection. And then after that, God called him to heaven. He went to heaven to be at the throne of God until he returns to the earth again in the future. That's where Jesus is now. He's called the first fruits of those who will rise again. That's kind of like a farming term where they would, would take the uh, very first uh, uh, crops that they would raise and they would give those to the priest. They were dedicated to the priests and for really like kind of for God. So Jesus was that first fruits. He was the first one. So I want you to understand that every person who has ever lived will die and every person will be resurrected. The people who believe and accept and repent and obey and follow Jesus, that's us Christians, will be in what is called the first resurrection. They will come back to life when Jesus returns from heaven to set up his kingdom of God on earth. The first phase of the kingdom will last about a thousand years and the believers who come back to life in that first resurrection will live forever and be leaders in that kingdom. I guess I need to mention that there will be a small number of people who are alive at the time that Jesus returns who will not die, because I just said everybody will die. There's a few people who won't die, but will be changed into spiritual bodies at that time. But other than that small number, everyone else who's ever lived on the planet will die and will be resurrected at some point. So after the first resurrection and the first phase of the kingdom, Satan will be released and destroyed and there'll be a lot of stuff happening, but then it will be time for the second resurrection. It's another resurrection. This will be what Revelation 20 verse five calls the rest of the dead. Those who were not followers of Jesus. Remember the followers of Jesus are already resurrected. But at this time, the people who were not followers of Jesus will come back to life and they will be judged according to how they live their lives on earth. In Revelation 20 verse 12, John wrote, and I saw the dead, the great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things were written in the books according to their deeds. So things are being written down now about how we live our lives. Kind of important to know that, isn't it? So as we see, the word resurrection can apply to several things. I have it in four things. One, those who were brought back to continue their physical life on earth, those resurrections I talked about in the Bible days, or number two, to Jesus who died for our sins and was resurrected to immortality. Three, to us believers who will be resurrected to immortality in the first resurrection when Jesus returns. And four, to those who were not believers, but lived on earth and will be in the second resurrection after the thousand years to face judgment for how they lived their lives. And then that'll be everybody who's ever lived will be brought back to life in some form or another. And which one of these resurrections will you be in? I hope and pray that you will follow and obey the teachings of Jesus and repent and accept his blood for your sins and live a life of love and following Jesus so that you will be in the first resurrection. Revelation 20 verse six says, blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection.